So Parallels have released a new version of their desktop virtualization package, Parallels Desktop 9, uh, and they've stated that there's quite a few new additional features and of course that it's faster. It's faster every time, of course. Um, so what we'll do, is let's have a look at Parallels. We'll have a look and see what the new features are like um, and just have a run through of it. So the first thing they say is that the interface for um, setting up a new virtual machine has been simplified. So let's fire up Parallels. We'll set up a new machine and have a look and see what's involved. So I'm going to click New. Okay, we're going to install Windows, so we'll leave it on that one. Okay, I'm going to do it from an image file, and it's going to ask me to drop the image file into there. Okay, so I have my list of ISOs here. I'm going to go for Windows 8. And I'm going to go for the 64-bit edition enterprise. So we'll just drag and drop it into there. Okay. We don't need to enter a product key for this. It's a Technet edition I think I'm entering at the moment. I'm going to say that I want it like a PC at the moment rather than integrated into the Mac. Now this one's an interesting one. You get to choose now whether it's it looks like your Windows 8 with the big Metro interface or like Windows 7 with which where it boots direct to the desktop and you have the normal Windows 7 type um, start menu. Now let's have a look a little later at uh, what that looks like. So I'm going to leave it like Windows 8 for now. I'm just going to choose where we put it. I'm going to make sure that I put it on the SSD um, just to try and speed it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just um, select customize as well before we actually install. Wonders off makes the machine. Now the reason I wanted to customize it is I just wanted to up the number of CPU cores and also the number, the amount of RAM allocated to the machine. So I've allocated eight cores and four gig of RAM. Now bear in mind this machine that we're running on is a late 2011 MacBook Pro. It's the i7 with um, four cores and hyper threading. So it's, and also it's running off an SSD. So it's a fairly, fairly substantial machine. So what we'll do is we'll just up that. and we'll let it install. And there we go, it's all done. Um, it took a little while, but it's about as seamless as can be, really. I mean, there's very little input required from any of your, um, any of the people setting up the machine. So let's just quickly switch this to full screen. There we go. And we'll have a look at some of the relative performance of the machine as well. So here we are with our built machine. Um, some of the keener eyed among you will notice that I've, um, by the miracle of video editing, I've gone off and uh, installed lots of applications just so we can have a look at the performance. So we're on the desktop, so let's have a look at um, the general performance. So firstly, let's have a look at our Windows Performance Index. Windows Experience Index even. It's pretty high. It's showing um, significantly uh, higher than my equivalent running on Parallels 8, but I'm not quite sure how that transposes in the real world. For example, I was getting a 7.1 for the top two and an 8.0 for the disk transfer rate. So the um, certainly the uh, sort of benchmarks here seem, seem to indicate that it's quicker. Does it feel any quicker? Well, let's have a look. Let's fire up some apps and we'll see what it looks like. There's Word.
So, as you can see, it is pretty fast. Um, does it feel faster than the previous edition? I'm not convinced. Um, it may be, you know, once you get into the details of benchmarks, it may feel slightly quicker, but in terms of general office use, it doesn't feel that much quicker. So let's look at some of the operational stuff, things like um, startup and shutdown times, and also things like taking snapshots. Um, let's shut the machine down, and we'll have a look and see what, what that performance is about like. go not too shabby so again let's start the machine up and we'll have a look at that performance as well ready to go so there's other things that I tend to use quite a lot things like snapshotting snapshotting is brilliant for when you want to install something or if you're not quite sure um, the effect of what you're about to do is, is going to have on the machine so let's take a snapshot of the machine and we'll make some changes and do some rollbacks as well and we'll just see roughly how long that takes as well so I'm going to pop up to the menu at the top virtual machine I'm going to take a snapshot There we go. And it's done. So just to see what the restoration's like, let's make some um, random changes here. I don't know, we'll change the background, or I don't know, we'll have some of that, I suppose. Of course, you can always cancel it, like I just did. And maybe um, okay. So we, we've made a couple of changes. Let's look at the rollback. So we'll pop into the menu again. We'll go to manage snapshots. I think I've got a couple on here. So let's select. We're going to restore to the snapshot that we just created. So we'll click go to, we'll say are you sure? And it will revert back to that previous position. Now, obviously the size of the snapshots and the, the amount of time it takes to um, restore will depend on uh, how many changes and you know what the capacity of the changes that you've made to the machine are. But in general, the, the snapshotting certainly feels a lot faster than the previous editions. So the performance is quite snappy. Um, snapshotting certainly feels faster. Does the general operation of the machine feel any quicker? Well, I'm not convinced. It, it may it may do in benchmarks, but uh, in terms of look and feel for for office type apps, it doesn't feel any faster. Um, so let's have a look at some of the other added features now. Things like um, the SkyDrive and the um, stuff like that that can be that's added to the machine. So the first thing I wanted to have a look at was the Windows 7 look for um, the Windows 8 machine. It's uh, listed as a new feature of Parallels 9. A lot of people don't like the uh, modern interface, which is that one, the one that can feel a little bit in your face. Certainly on my home system, for example, I've got a couple of 27 inch screens. Um, when you hit the start menu, it's very intrusive. It feels very, very in your face. Personally, I've got used to it, so I'm kind of used to it, but um, Let's have a look at the Windows 7 view anyway, and we can see what it looks like. So we'll pop back to the desktop. So on one of the menus up here, there we go, under view, we have the option to use the Windows 7 look. So let's do that. 
what it does is it downloads and installs the Start 8 menu, which I think a lot of you will probably be familiar with anyway. Let's let it run, uh, and then we'll have a look and see what it looks like. Okay, that's finished. It would have been nice for us if it had told us it had finished. But one thing you will notice now, in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll have what appears to be a small menu appear. So this is the Start 8 menu, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Now pressing the Windows key or the Command key in, in our environment gives us the traditional Start menu as opposed to the main menu, which is that one. You can still access it from that Start menu. Okay, you have the option to pop into Windows 8 menu, and there it is. But, in the meantime, if you prefer that Start menu or the Windows 7 look, there you go, we're back to where it was. Okay, there's another option as well, which gives you the ability to run um, desktop-based apps, uh, but actually in a, in a desktop window. By way of example, if we pop into our Windows 8 Start menu and fire up Internet Explorer, you'll see now, rather than it appearing and taking over our screen like it would in your traditional Windows 8 setup, it now appears as a window. Okay, um, again, if we look at some other apps, I don't know, let's maybe pop into the news. There we go. You can appear, see that it's appearing as a window. Okay, so conversely, you can actually easily turn it off, pop up to the menu at the top, go to view, change off, turn off Windows 7 look. And there we are, we're back to uh, a normal Windows 8 setup. So for some people that could be quite useful. I, I actually prefer the Start 8 version, so the Windows 7 look, certainly on my bigger machine, bigger screen machines anyway. So the next thing I wanted to have a look at was just around these new features about being able to share your uh, cloud services such as iCloud, SkyDrive and all that sort of stuff with between your Windows session and your Mac. Um, I think some of it's a little bit confusing and I'll show you why. So if we pop into our sharing menu, which is up here, devices sharing and we'll configure it. Now in here, you'll see that there's two panes here. So there's share your Mac resources and share your Windows resources. Now the interesting one is to share the SkyDrive with Mac because I, from reading the forums, there seems to be some misunderstanding around this. What that option allows you to do is to have your SkyDrive application installed in Windows. By way of example, I have the SkyDrive app installed and I've got a SkyDrive, SkyDrive folder. Um, that's my daughter's one, by the way, in case you're wondering why I'm putting X's over after everything. Um, so I've, I've synchronized my SkyDrive with this Windows session, okay? Now what that option does, let's get it back again is it actually makes my SkyDrive folder within Windows available to my Mac session. So in effect, my SkyDrive folder appears in my Finder. Not quite sure how, you, how functionally usable that is uh, or useful. I mean, I have my SkyDrive native on my Mac, you see, so I wouldn't necessarily want it that direction. I'd want it so it was uh, looking at the SkyDrive on my Mac. But let's have a look at the other options here, which is the Share iCloud Dropback Dropbox and Google Drive. I have all of those installed, so we're gonna turn that on. So what we should be able to do now is pop into Finder, and we'll see some extra drives available. So pop under my computer, we'll see that my Dropbox folder is available. Uh, photo stream for my cloud, so all my photos are there. And there's my main iCloud folder. 
Okay, so all my files and text that it will be there, for example. Um, so in effect, all it's doing is just mapping it into the Windows session. How useful is it? Well, it's kind of useful to have access to the iCloud folder. You can do that on the Mac side as well, by the way. I think I've covered that in another article. Is it a groundbreaking thing? Possibly not. I don't think so. Anyway, um, getting access to your photos is kind of nice, I suppose, which is there under your photo stream. Of course, adding stuff to your photo stream as well will also synchronize that across those devices. One final thing I just wanted to have a quick look at. Um, I know we allocated 4 gig of RAM and 8 cores to this machine. Um, well, I say 8 cores, it's 4 of course, but they're um, hyper-threaded. So what's the performance like if we knock down that capability? So what I'm going to do is just take that machine, configure it, and knock the hardware specifications down. So I'm going to take it down to one CPU and two gig of RAM. There we go. Let's fire it up and see what it's like. There we go. I think you can see that it's still perfectly usable even when you cut down the resources that are allocated to it. So let's have a look at the experience index and maybe we can update that and see how much it drops by. There we go, that's what it was. So let's run a refresh. So it's, there doesn't appear to be that much difference between the two. So. What about general operation? Let's fire up some apps. It doesn't feel quite as snappy, kind of you'd expect it without uh, so many calls allocated, but it's certainly still perfectly workable. So, in summary, would I recommend going from Parallels 8 to Parallels 9? I don't believe there's a big enough gap here, to be honest, to actually worth the investment, even though it's only 30 or 40 pounds. Um, I don't see a big enough performance increase I don't see a, uh, an even bigger or, or any justifiable uh, gap in functions and features either so it it's a good platform it's a solid platform but it's certainly building on eight rather than being anything special I don't think you'd be disappointed if you install nine um, I just don't I'm not convinced that it's worth the uh, the upgrade or rather the cost of the upgrade